In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called sine diffraction division. This is going to give you a division problem. There's going to be at least one fraction in the problem. I've got two fractions in the problem. It wants us to carry out the division and then write the answer in the simplest form. Um, so in order to solve this problem, we're going to have to remember one of the rules about multiplying and dividing with fractions. So if we have a division, if we have one fraction divided by another, that is mathematically equal to the first fraction times the second fraction, inverting the numerator and the denominator. And it's really important when you're doing this that you do not flip-flop the first fraction of the division problem. You can only flip-flop the second fraction of the division problem, and you're just going to be swapping the numerator for the denominator. So for the problem that's been given to me, I have 4 thirds divided by negative 8 over 9. Applying this rule right here, I'm going to flip-flop the 8 over 9 portion. That's going to give me 4 thirds times negative 9 over 8. And now I am ready to carry out the multiplication. I have 4 times 9, don't forget about that negative sign that's going to be in there, 4 times 9 is 36, and 3 times 8 is 24, and don't get excited, this isn't the answer because it is definitely not in its simplest form. I'm going to need to simplify this fraction. I'm going to do that by, well, I could have, I could have done the simplification up here before I did all the multiplication. Maybe that's a little bit tricky. If you can simplify it from this place, then that's going to save you time. But once we get down here, to simplify this fraction, we are looking for the greatest common factor of 36 and 24. That means I'm looking for the largest possible number that I can divide into both 36 and 24. And sometimes it's hard to see the greatest common factor right off the bat. And that's okay. If you can't see it right away, you can just find a small common fr uh, factor. Like, for example, I know that I can divide 2 into both 36 and 24. So I just make a little note to myself. I'm going to divide both of these terms by 2, and that's going to give me 36 divided by 2 is 18. Double checking to make sure that's right. And 24 divided by 2 is 12. So this gives me a new expression, a more simple, simplified expression. Uh, and let's think about that. Is this the correct answer to the problem? Probably not, because I'm pretty sure I can simplify this even more. Again, looking for the greatest common factor. Some of you might be going crazy saying, oh my gosh, it's 6. Just use 6. Um, but let's pretend like you can't see that, and you just try 2 again, because you can just keep trying. Um, any number and see what you get after each try. So if we divide by 2, that's going to give us negative 9 over 6. Has that been simplified all the way? Nope, because we can divide both of these terms by 3. So we'll make a little note of that as well. We can divide that by 3, we can divide that by 3, and that's going to give me negative 3 over 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and that is as simple as this problem can get, as simplified as it can get. So that is going to be negative 3 over 2. Now we could have done that down here uh, if we would have recognized that the greatest common factor for both of these was 12, if we were able to see that. And if you were able to see that right off the bat, then that would have saved you a lot of time. But again, I'm just trying to show you that if you can't find the greatest common factor right away, don't worry. Just try, keep trying uh, with the numbers until you get yourself down to something that can't be further simplified.